Working with the Codename One sources is not for the faint of heart. You can learn a lot from going through the process. However, if your only goal is to avoid the build servers, you might find it harder to work with. In fact, I personally use the build servers when building apps and testing them. I almost never use offline build or the sources directly. Instead, I hack and test things via the include source option. However, learning this is still valuable and I'm aware of a few people who don't share my opinion on this matter. Still, why would I write a guide for something like this? There are three individuals I think of who might benefit from this guide. If you are the type of person who needs to do everything yourself, then this is pretty much it. If you want to understand the underpinnings of Codename One at a deeper level than more, the more abstract descriptions, then this is a good first step. If you want to feel secure that you can hack Codename One manually if our service changes or becomes unavailable in the future, then the mere existence of this guide should help calm some of those concerns. To understand how to work with Codename One code, we first need to understand what Codename One does. For this case, I'll remove the build servers from the equation and focus on the portability aspect. Codename One includes three distinct pieces of four portability. VM. For some platforms, such as Android, the VM is natively included. However, we work on top of ParparVM in iOS, KVM in Windows, and TVM for JavaScript. API represents the actual calls to the com.codename1 classes. Ports are the implementations of the API for the various platforms. This is all pretty trivial. The API is always the same. We change the VM and ports to support all the platforms. So if you understand this, then the simulator is simple too. In the simulator, the VM is just the standard Java VM. And the port is just the port of Codename 1 to Java SE. There is a bit more to that though. The port to Java SE includes a lot of specialized glue code to show the simulator and other features such as the network monitor, etc. But let's start with this and move on. All of the instructions that follow will work regardless of whether you have the plugin installed. I will focus on using the command line and assume you can translate that to your IDE of choice. Technically, you don't really need the plugin if you are working from the source code. However, it's convenient to work with. It means that selecting new project and picking codename one just works. It means that double clicking a resource file launches the designer tool, but technically you don't really need it. What you do need is JDK 8. Notice that newer versions might not work. We generally use the Oracle JDK because it comes bundled with JavaFX and that makes everything simpler as the simulator needs JavaFX for some features, specifically media and browser. If you choose to use OpenJDK, it might work if you install it with OpenJFX, but it's not something we tried. Apache Ant can be downloaded from the Apache website. Make sure Ant is in your system path and that the command runs. Note that you will need to define the Java home environment variable properly. Git is optional. You can download the zip from GitHub, but if you'd like to contribute pull requests back into the project, this can be useful. For Android development, we'll use Android Studio 3, which you can download from Google. For iOS development, we will use Xcode 9.x or 0.2 from Apple. We need to clone these repositories or just download the source zips of these repositories and expand them. These repositories should reside in the same hierarchy and I will rely on that later on when giving out instructions. You will notice we have 
three repositories to start with. Codename 1 is the main repo. The skins make sense as we use them to show the phone skins, but why have binaries? The immediate question would be why do we need binaries for an open source project? The answer is that they are harder to build on their own in some cases, and in others, we need stubs or nat of native platforms so we can compile against them without downloading the full SDK. Let's go over the files and directories in the binaries project and explain them one by one. The SVG directory is from the open source Batik project. It's unmodified. We need it for the designer tool for SVG support. The IKVM project is hard to compile without Windows, so we have a pre-compiled version here. These are legacy stubs of the BlackBerry OS. I won't cover BlackBerry here, so these aren't really needed. We need stubs to compile JavaFX code. We don't embed this. This is the JH Labs project for Java C image filters. We use this to implement Gaussian blur in the simulator. These are used by the SQLite implementation in the simulator. These are part of the open source ASM project, which we use in Parpar VM. Everything here is stubs, which we use to compile the Android native implementation without downloading the full Android SDK. We don't run any of this, just use it for compilation. These are legacy stubs for J2ME, which is no longer supported. These are libraries used by the Codename One designer tool. There are a lot of Swing libraries used here. All of them are open source. This is an open source library we developed to improve Javadoc generation. Check out the repos for the project. This is a pre-compiled binary from the CLDC directory in the project. It's here for convenience. This is technically a set of stubs of the Java API supported by Codename One. This is a customized version of the CLDC.jar file that exposes classes.getResource as stream string, which we normally don't want to expose. The entire directory contains binaries for the UWP port. I won't go into that because I won't cover the offline building of the UWP version here. Before we go into building the project, let's inspect the separate pieces. Most of the pieces we fetched in the Codename One repository are NetBeans projects. Notice that NetBeans projects are just specific folder structures with an ant build XML file. That means you don't need NetBeans in order to build or run them. The Codename One fo folder includes the Codename One APIs. This is just a standard NetBeans ant project that contains 100% portable code. Notice that at this time, this project still uses Java 5 syntax due to some technical constraints. Codename One Designer contains the designer tool, which is a Swing application built with the Swing app framework. It's a standard NetBeans project too, with major pieces written using the NetBeans Matisse GUI builder. The VM directory hosts the Parpar VM source code. It includes two subfolders, each of which is a standalone NetBeans Ant project. The bytecode translator is a Java NetBeans project that reads Java bytecode and generates C code. It includes a couple of built-in C files, but most of the C code is generated. The portion of the VM that isn't a part of the Codename One API. This is a NetBeans project that includes implementation of all the Java packages needed by Parpar VM. Factory is a simple project that contains one class, com.codename1.impl.implementationfactory. That lets us decouple the implementation of Codename One from the ports. Themes are the native OS theme files, which we load when a theme derives from native. These are embedded into the ports and into the skins. Tests contain 
unit tests for the platform. Ports are the various open source OS native ports of Codename One and some platform specific tools. This is where most of the platform specific code of Codename One resides. The Android directory obviously includes the Android port. The same is true for the iOS port. Java SE includes both the desktop port and the simulator. UWP includes port to universal Windows platform. Notice that this also includes our fork of IKVM, which is the VM implementation for that platform. CLDC 11 is not a port, but rather a set of supported stub APIs. This isn't an actual VM, but rather the stubs we use when compiling Codename One apps to make sure they don't use unsupported APIs. Retro is an adaptation to the Retro Weaver that added support for Java 5 code to run on old BlackBerry slash J2ME devices. This code is no longer used. The same is true for the other ports within this directory.